Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video will not have any live coding but a precursor before you dive into the AI world. Generative AI is all the rage these days and many of you might still be getting started in the world of AI. Many of you have already tried the first Hello World script of AI where you write a CNN program for recognizing a digit or identifying a cat or a dog problem. Each coordinate which is used for image classification is made up of two parts, a base and a head. The base is used to extract the feature from an image. It is formed using a few more layer that perform the CNN operation. The head on the other hand is used to determine the class of the image. It is made up of dense layer but may also have other layer like dropout to avoid overfitting. But what exactly is happening in these two layer can be seen here. The base is used to extract visual features like windows, doors, wheels and so on. It could also be color, texture or simple straight outlines of a trunk. So let's dive a little deeper and see what exactly happens in the base layer. First of all, a base layer has three main steps that you need to understand. A filter, detect and condense. All right. Imagine you're on a mission to teach a computer to recognize stuff in picture like wheels, headlight and those snazzy shapes that make a car look like a car. Enter the detectives of tech world filters. They're like little windows sliding over the photo looking for a specific pattern and inside each filter is a brain buddy called a kernel telling the filter how to react when it finds something interesting. It's like the ultimate teamwork. Filters and kernels are picture detectives. Now what is a kernel? Kernel is just a fancy word for a matrix of n by n size which has some random value generated by the convert class. Like for example, this is a 3 by 3 matrix. This is a kernel. Now the number in this matrix keeps getting changed with each change in, in the matrix. The model is able to add different filters. Imagine watching a picture wearing a green glass followed by a blue glass, a red glass and so on. Each time you change the filter, some pixel in the picture either get highlighted, completely vanish or fade a little. If you have ever seen solar eclipse, you would see that people use X-ray films, right? Why do they do that? Because they want to hide out specific features or lighting that is showing up in the sky. That is, you don't want to see blue light, you only want to see the highlighted sun. The concept is exactly the same. This change in visual image of picture is used in the next phase, which is called detect phase. So in essence, a kernel weight, the random value in the matrix, determine what kind of feature will be created. This is because a filter may sometime hide a body outline or highlight some other feature or some outlines. And how many feature are detected? If you look closely in the Conby method that takes an argument called filters, like for example, here we are taking 64 filters, right? So each of these is going to create a map of 64 filter maps. So for first scan, we are saying that we want to extract 64 feature using a kernel of 3 by 3 size, which slides over the picture. So this 3 by 3 scan is going to slide over to this box and then the next box. So which means that this this one in the middle is going to be scanned twice. So the next box will be up to here and the third box will be up to this place. Okay. So now that we understand I have applied filter, let's pick up a notch and look at the detect face. So we are sliding our filter all over the image, creating what we call feature maps. These map highlight in places where filter finds cool stuff. But hey, we don't want any cool stuff, right? We want the coolest of the cool. That's where a relu activation function comes in. It's like turning on the lights in the parts of the image that got the detective's attention. If it's cool, it says, if it's not, lights out. A relu or rectified linear unit function simply says that we should replace the negative values used in the filter to zero. This way, we will be intensifying other pixel. Think of this like when you were a kid and wanted to trace a cool picture which you want to draw and later color. Say something like this. Okay. So you take a plain sheet of paper, put it over a screen or a glass plate with 60 watt bulb and trace the outline of a Spider-Man on a page. Right. So this is something exactly what happens over here. You 
take a random weight in a matrix and what activation what it did is it created this different highlights right for example this one looks a little embossed this one looked a little grayed out with a pink shade on it and this one has a black and white with a pink shade on it and each of these you see a different part is being highlighted and this is happening because we're using different weights in the filter and what exactly is happening with this is that for each of these images that has been created by the kernel you will see a different section has been highlighted so what relu function does is after it it has it has these uh, filter images it is when it converts a negative value like for example th this is a negative value this is a negative it is going to convert it to zero and what happens with that is because something has been converted to zero some other things will hi get highlighted a little more right for example uh, for people who color their hair right if it is black hair and they try to put a, a brown hair that brown hair will significantly stand out okay and if i if i turn those if i color those black hair into white that brown eyes is, is going to stand out even more prominently so over here imagine this if a zero value converts an a particular pixel to black what would happen around here right this particular line which you're seeing over here the outline of the windshield if i if i convert all of these value into black because i converted negative value to a zero value this outline is going to stand out more right so with these value when we when we said that okay create a 64 filter map what is going to happen is for all those all those filter map one or the other thing is going to stand out most prominently for example after the relu function has happened maybe in this particular picture maybe this section is the most highlighted section because everything else doesn't stand out much except this particular piece so after this maybe this is the only relevant feature that it has picked out after turning the lights out okay so if filter hides or eliminates certain section of picture and function and activation function like relu helps highlight the outline which is used to detect feature map it's time to shrink things down with a condensed face our feature map are now filled with awesome details but we don't need every pixel in town enter max pooling our downsizing magic it's like picking the coolest pixel from the group and tossing the rest remember what i said earlier about outlines that's exactly what is happening we don't want all of those dead pixel in there or the pixel which you don't need for example we only wanted the highlight highlight of a windshield so that's where, where max pulling is going to do it's going to say i don't need everything else you have already highlighted what i need so i'm only going to keep that but because now i have all of this dead space my size for that matrix which i am holding is big and i need to simplify that so imagine you have a a sheet which is 10 by 20 feet one which covers your whole wall and you and you ask your kid to go and go and you know draw a picture of spider-man out there and he draws on in one small three by three inches space a small spider-man right now for you only that particular spider-man image is a valid image everything else it's it's a blank canvas makes no sense so you want to now cut it down cut out all the white spaces and only focus on the image of the spider-man that's exactly what max pooling is doing here so what happens in max pooling is you it doesn't do any mathematical computation right so it resembles a convolution layer but operates differently instead of employing a kernel size it uses straightforward maximum function right where max pool size is similar to your kernel size but unlike a convolution layer with trainable weights in its kernel max pooling layer doesn't possess any trainable weights all it says is when i specify a value of two by two it is going to move over in two by two sections and continue to pick up the max value from that particular two by two matrix so after implementing the relu function you will observe that the feature map contains significant less dead space and uh, everywhere else with, where it has been filled with zero you need to remove all all of those values right which is represented by black areas in the image so propagating these zero activations throughout the entire network would inflate the model size without contributing to substantial useful information instead our goal is to condense that feature map and preserving only the most valuable portion 
of the actual feature. This is exactly the purpose of max pooling. So max pooling involves selecting a group of activation from the initial feature map and substituting them with the highest value. So in essence, it simply enhances that feature. The pooling simply amplifies the ratio of active pixel to zero pixel. So in this slide, when you specify a pool size of two, it means a square matrix of two, like I explained earlier, right? The scan goes over every two by two sub matrix and picks the maximum value. In the first orange cell that you see over here, minus one is the highest. Similarly, in this section, in the green one, two is the highest. And again, in the last one, one is highest. So it is going to do that for every single two by two section over here, and it's going to convert into a four by three matrix. From this big matrix, we are down to the small one. Now you might be wondering, like I, if it went through the ReLU function, why am I still showing minus one? It's my mistake. I should have picked picked up all the positive number, but I just I just copy paste. It's a copy paste mistake. So please ignore. Imagine that these are all positive values, and we are only picking a maximum value from this and reducing the image size. So if this is the outline of a headlight, you see that all of these dead spaces in here and on the outside, we still want to preserve something like a circle. So over here, it is going to out of these four values. I, I know this is slightly darker, but one of the pixel is darker. So it picks the, the uh, pixel, which has the lightest shade or the most intensified color. It is going to pick it up. I think this one makes more sense. So out of all of these four pixels, since it's a two by two matrix, out of all of these four pixels, this pixel is the brightest. It is going to pick that particular value. Same way in the next one, this pixel is, is the brightest. These are all dead space. Think of them as all zeros, right? So it, it is going to pick up th this particular value. So in this case, which is if we, if we consider that this is the value, the maximum value is one over here. So imagine that this is a max value one and it simply picks up and puts it over here. So it goes down and then converts it into a much smaller image, much smaller model, which still resembles somewhat like a circle. Okay. But wait, if pooling is so great, can we not apply pooling over and over again? That is an excellent question. And we'll see that in the next slide. So yes, the answer is yes, you can apply pooling multiple time, but as you see, when you keep applying pooling, you will soon see that you are losing the important feature and will reach a point that you will not be able to recognize that original image at all. Right. So eventually that circles is going to get into smaller and small pixel size. And eventually the last pooling layer where you stop, say you applied pooling like six, seven, eight times by the by fourth or fifth time itself that that something which resemble like a circle may resemble like a straight line and you won't be able to tell whether it was a, a an outline of a headlight or it's it's a square from a windshield right so some something like this when when i uh use max pooling one time it converted to something like this and then uh, in the second max pooling it converted something like, like this and so on so forth when if, if you keep going eventually your image is going to turn so bad you won't be able to identify any feature at all so let's connect the dots. The filter face has a detectives looking for wheels, headlights and the whole car vibe, right? In the detect face, the CNN and ReLU activation function light up the coolest parts and the condensed face with the max pooling. It's our, our way of saying, hey, keep the awesomeness and ditch the rest. It's like filter, detect and downsize dance. Now we are not stopping at one layer. We are stacking them up. Each layer is like a level of coolness. The first layer grabs the basic things like edges, while the deeper ones catch on to complex structure. But doing all this from scratch and finding the best kernel takes a lot of time, training and eat up a lot of GP power. And here's the trick, transfer learning. It's like having a big sibling who already knows a lot about pictures. We can borrow their wisdom and tweak things for our car or truck classifier. But we'll talk about that transfer learning in our next video. Adios for today and hope you like and enjoyed this video. So please go ahead, like and subscribe this video and do drop me a comment and tell me more about what all content you want to watch so that I can make great content in the next video. Happy coding.